This is Dr. Teru Kumagi from Aimi University Graduate School of Medicine in Japan. It is greatly my pleasure to introduce our paper just published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. The title of our paper is Early Detection of Pancreatic Cancer in Patients with Chronic Liver Disease Under Hepatocellular Carcinoma Surveillance. Before I introduce our paper, I would like to go through an overview of pancreatic cancer. As you know, pancreatic cancer is a common cancer worldwide with worst prognosis. Five-year survival somewhere around 5 and 10 percent. Due to lack of an algorithm to diagnose the disease at an early stage, However, recent advance in early diagnosis of pancreatic cancer has been reported. And one of them is detection of indirect features such as dilated pancreatic duct and cystic lesion would help diagnose pancreatic cancer at earlier stage. I would also like to introduce guidelines for hepatocellular carcinoma surveillance. Advanced liver fibrosis, such as liver cirrhosis and chronic hepatitis, are known to be risk of hepatocellular carcinoma, namely liver cancer. And the main etiologies are hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus, and alcohol. Therefore, Japan Society of Hepatology, American Association for the Study of Liver Disease, and European Association for the Study of the Liver and other society strongly recommend those patients to undergo periodical surveillance for hepatocellular carcinoma by abdominal imaging and tumor markers. So in this context, we aim to clarify whether patients with HBV and HCV, chronic liver disease, under surveillance for HCC are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer at early stages or not. Between 2011 and 2013, 520 consecutive patients with pancreatic cancer diagnosed at the Ehim University Hospital and its affiliated hospital were recruited in this study. We collected data on age, sex, hepatitis B virus status, hepatitis C virus status, chance of the pancreatic cancer diagnosis, and UICC stage at diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. Of the 520 patients, 73 patients did not have HBV and HCV tests done. Therefore, those patients were excluded from the study. Finally, 447 patients were eligible in this study. 45 seven patients were positive for HBV or HCV, whereas 402 were negative. Of the 45 positive for hepatitis virus, 19 patients were known to have HBV or HCV prior to pancreatic cancer diagnosis. 16 of them were adherent to HCC surveillance. Therefore, we defined this group as HCC surveillance group, whereas the remainder 431 patients were defined as non-surveillance group. When we compared UICC stage at the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer, between HCC surveillance group and known surveillance group, HCC surveillance group had much more patients, those who were diagnosed at earlier stage, than those who are in known surveillance group. For instance, HCC surveillance program group had two patients with stage zero, which counts for 12.5 percent, while Known surveillance group had only four patients, 
which count for 0.9%. This trend held true until the cutoff of comparison were changed to stage 0 to 1B. Here, I would like to show a typical case of early pancreatic cancer diagnosed during HCC surveillance. We had a male in his 80s who had contrast enhanced CT done and dilated pancreatic duct was detected. However, tumor was not visible. So subsequently, he had MRCP and ERCP done. Pancreatic juice collected during ERCP turned out to be class 5 cytology. Therefore, he underwent surgical resection, which resulted in pan in 3 pancreatic cancer. Interestingly, of those who were diagnosed in stage 0, all six patients were detected from dilated pancreatic duct. So in conclusion, patients with HPV and HCV chronic liver disease under surveillance for HCC are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer at early stages. Therefore, careful observation of the pancreas and special attention to indirect features such as duct dilatation and cystic lesion in the pancreas are also important during ACC surveillance. Finally, we hope that our data will facilitate improving the management of pancreatic cancer, especially in the diagnosis. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.